uh, with this idea. And that is that the Shekhinah itself, which we're again using, is the source of all vitality. For it to be diffused within the world, it would nullify everything. Just as the ray of sun within the sun is um, nullified. Likewise, if it were to be reveal itself as itself, it would nullify all of, nothing of creation would be able to exist. So what is necessary? There has to be a garment that will be a protective garment over the sun, metaphorically speaking, that now that what will come from the sun is something that we are capable of receiving. Now the problem is, how could something be a garment to the sun and not be kind of burnt up and become part of the sun? So the alternative explains, well, because it's something that's even greater than the sun, again, metaphorically, and that is um, Torah. Torah is greater than, um, than the sun, which is Malchus. Remember, uh, the sun now metaphorically is Malchus. It is greater than it, so it can guard Malchus. Why is it greater than? Because it's supernal wisdom. Torah is supernal wisdom. And God, he and his wisdom are one. And therefore, it's able to garb. Garb means over here to be the protective garment that I can now be a recipient of the vitality that comes from God and not be um, obliterated, so to speak, to be nullified completely that I don't exist. I need that garb. Now the question is, how could it be, if, it, if the garb is greater than what it's garbing, right? In other words, Torah is greater than even Malchus, the Shrina, the Divine Presence, then, well, if it's greater, then why wouldn't I become nullified from that garb, from that enclothement of Torah as it funnels through the Divine Presence of God? So the alternative explains because ultimately the supernal wisdom in the Torah descends into material things like the 613 commandments of the Torah. So therefore, even though on one hand it is greater than even Shrina, the divine presence of God, it's, but yet on the other hand, since it descends into the material world, into physicality, it's able to take the divine presence of God, that we can have something of that presence in this world. It's a very abstract idea. I hope I brought that across um, clearly. Let's go back again. What, we're, what we want to be able to appreciate is where do we have God in a way, not, not God as creator, because God is creator, that's already a contraction of the divine light. That's create, God as he creates, you know, the world. But that's not what we want. We want his presence. That's Shina. That is the feminine part of the divine his presence. So that's where we're going with this. The essence of God is everywhere. We don't have a, um, a revealed and clear relationship with, with that in, um, in our world, the essence of God. I mean, actually we do, we'll, we'll get there. But what we want is the presence of God that where he's revealed to us. Not as the active creator, because that's the ray of sun that is now producing, as the soul produces and uh, 
a ray of the soul that comes into the eye to see and the ear to hear. But we want to have the connection to the divine presence. So the divine presence is revealing God, the essence of God. How is it that we can have the divine presence that, and we should still be present and not be um, blown away by that? It should be too great for us. That's the idea. It's like the sun. It's too powerful. If that, if the sun were, you know, not 93 and a half million miles away, uh, we'd be obliterated if it was, you know, just a, you know, just a million miles closer. We'd be obliterated by it. It's too, too powerful. So likewise, the presence of God, it's too powerful. So there's a garb, which is Torah mitzvahs. Just as clothing kind of conceals, you know, things that should be concealed that need to be concealed, right? And it's too powerful. Um, so likewise, the presence needs to be uh, concealed, garbed, so that we can have access to the presence of God, but in a way that he's garbed that we can have kind of connection, experience of it. And how is that? Through the supernal wisdom of Torah. That is ultimately clothed in a physical expression down here. And through that physical expression down here, we have access to God himself, to the divine presence of God. And the divine presence of God is the vehicle for God himself. I hope I brought that across well. <laughs> okay. Um, so, actually, I want to share with everybody that uh, I, I have a new and improved format on how we're going to do our daily learning. Um, we're going to start off as we did today with teaching, with the teachings. Most people are here um, in order to learn the teachings of Tanya, so uh, I'm going to give that over. And then thereafter... I'm going to take questions and answers only after the teachings are done. And uh, I'll, I'll begin with um, with Facebook um, and then Clubhouse and other uh, Facebook and Instagram and then Clubhouse because um, uh, in Clubhouse the discussion can go on and on, and um, which is great. But um, I, I want to first start only with questions. And then we can open up after the questions that we take from Facebook and Clubhouse, we can open up to conversation and discussion, right? To conversation and discussion. And uh, that way we can, I, I can try to be fair to everybody. So Simcha, you have a question. Were we created to be in Hashem's presence? Were we created to be in Hashem's presence? Yeah. Well, Adam and Eve were in Hashem's presence in the Garden of Eden. And we will be ultimately in that presence, uh, you know, um, in a full manner in times of Mashiach. And, and ultimately, yes, that's where we were, we were created to, to be, ultimately in God's presence, 100%. And that's where we're going with this. Okay, I hope that was clear. Rhonda, uh, Rona. Is Judaism a static or dynamic religion? It's both. It's both. It's static and dynamic. The Ten Commandments are carved in stone. That's static in the sense that, you know, it's not changing. Not Eleventh Commandment. Thou shall, um, thou shall um, uh, celebrate Mother's Day. It's not the Eleventh Commandment. Sorry, mothers, nothing personal. <laughs> it's not the 11th commandment, or there isn't the 11th commandment. I mean, there's 613, but the ones in the, in, in the 10 commandments are carved in stone. Um, so in that respect, Judaism is static. Only 613, we can't make 614, only 10 in, in, on the tablets, right? At the same time, um, it is dynamic in the fact that um, the Talmud 
We have teachings there that explain the oral Torah is ever evolving in its um, understanding the depth and the breadth of the teachings. So it is actually both, right? It is actually both. Um, which is, by the way, paradox. I would suggest that other religions are either dynamic, other faiths are dynamic and they're just ever evolving and they don't stay connected to any uh, ultimate truths or whatever, or, or they evolve in that. Um, and then you have other faiths and religions that are completely static and they're still living in, you know, third world kind of way because of being extremely static. Judaism is both and that is a complete paradox. Um, Darren, is it a mother's responsibility to make the children to become a better person or the father is more responsible to making the children to become a better person? Both are responsible. Different aspects of the responsibility and overlapping aspects, but both are responsible. Um, mother is more responsible for uh, creating the proper atmosphere in the home. The father is more like direct kind of teachings, like Torah teachings and so on. Um, you know, so, uh, of, you know, but they, they both are responsible and should share the responsibility and should discuss the responsibility of uh, raising children. Uh, Andrew, is it only the Shechina energy that gives us life through Torah's shield to limit the veil of light? that reaches us th uh, through Torah. Uh, yes, so the Shekhinah again is the um, divine presence of God that is, is, is very powerful. It needs to be vested, garment, uh, in a manner that gives us access to the divine presence of God. And that is the Torah itself, the Torah and its teachings uh, and its mitzvahs as it is expressed in material physical reality down here 613 commandments yes absolutely okay yes thank you davida am i missing anybody i think i got everybody anna is i know now that the divine intelligence needs malchus shechina to be revealed like chachma needs bina to be revealed in malchus when it's revealed in divine presence it needs a garment greater than he is, otherwise it would be annihilated. The garment, Torah, Malchus, Shechina, is the vehicle for the Ainsar's presence. Beautiful. Um, uh, Davida, you have a question you touched upon, but I'm not, one, I'm wondering if I can continue. Okay. So Davida, ask the question again, if you don't mind, because I'm, I'm, I'm not clear I got it. Okay. In the meantime, Eugenia says, I know now that Torah serves as a vehicle for the infinite light, to be revealed, allowing physical beings to connect to Hashem without dissolving in ultimate source. Right. But what's important is that we need to know that we are actually um, being, we are connected with the Shechina, with the Divine Presence. And the Divine Presence is the vehicle, again, for the Ein So we're connected ultimately with God Himself. Absolutely. We're in the middle of a thought, I must tell you. And, and and this thought will continue in tomorrow's class and uh, we uh, by the way the end of this week friday or is it thursday it might be thursday i think yeah thursday no friday we will conclude the first book of tanya and uh, we will celebrate and then of course we're going to continue to the second book but um yeah, so this is the piecemeal idea of what the Alta Rebbe is explaining to us today. Um, so, any more thoughts over here? Um, Marcy, Sina, Daniela, Noe, John, Karen, uh, Celeste, Hannah, Marjan, Cosmic, Jeff, anybody want to share something, please do. Um, Uh, MB um, read somewhere that uh, that Christianity took only Chesed and Islam took only Gvura, but Jews have taken both to continue the third Tiferet. Yes, that's uh, very true. What you're saying, um, meaning 
this is the idea that, you know, uh, the question was asked earlier about static and um, dynamic. So yes, Christianity took chesed and therefore is just, you know, pushing the envelope forward. And Islam took gvura and uh, therefore remains to refrain and, and, and static. And um, what we... Uh, what Judaism took is Tiferes, is a fusion of the two. That's the parent. Yes. Uh, very true. Uh, John, please share Hello. with us. So um, here's my question. Sure. For what, from what perspective, Tim Tum is a collection of contractions um, outside or discursively prior to time, at least from the El Elyon. Right. Analytical position. From another perspective, um, it is a sequence of contractions that we can look at in order. Um, so, Kabbalistically speaking, when um, in this order uh, is gender first revealed? Excellent question. Obviously, in the Torah itself, it's revealed within uh, the the, create, the Genesis story. But um, right. What about it? Very good. Thank you. Excellent question. Um, so when do we have the concept of gender, um, male and female? Because obviously Ein Soif is beyond any kind of gender. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. So where, where does the concept of gender begin? And that actually begins in the world of Atsilos, the world of emanation, as God emanates. Um, beyond the essence of God. And this there, is the four world model? That's the four world model, right? It's the four world model, but it's the first world. Well, yes, it, uh, so uh, let, let me um, clarify that correct what you're saying. But when we speak about uh, the world of emanation, which is the world of Atsilus, it's not the world of creation. World of creation is uh, already means uh, individuality, um, separateness, but the world of emanation, there isn't any separateness. It's sort of like the person uh, and what you do is separate from you ultimately. Um, so in creation, there is Bria, Yitzir, and Anasiya, the three worlds that is the creative force of God, that what he does, right? And then there is the world of emanation. So in the world of emanation begins there already uh, male and female. And how so? Well, in intelligence, we have the male part of intelligence, which is Chochmah, the right brain. We have the female part of intelligence, the left brain, uh, which is Bina, understanding. And then we have uh, also Chesed, which is uh, kindness, which is uh, the male part, more specifically. And the Gvura, the refrain, uh, is more the feminine part. But yeah, that, those I don't want to go into a lengthy uh, explanation about that. But they are not yet. But but that's where it, that's where it begins. That's where it begins. The male and the female. So in general, in generalities, we would call um, again in in, in intelligence um, the chachma part, the male, bina, the uh, the feminine part. Together, though, as one unit, um, it becomes male. That would then be revealed in malchus, which is feminine. So, quick question: If it's is it worthwhile for me to dig into this Sefer Yitzchak um, to understand more about this question? Um, Yes and no. It's not, you know, that's a very, uh, you know, uh, I don't suggest that that's where you would get that your... question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's very, it's very abstract. You need the guidance in, in that. So I would suggest, okay. uh, you know, um, there, there might be other stuff that, you know, more current teachers that would be able to bring it down into a, a manner that, you know, you can uh, appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Um, Davida. Uh, oh, okay. 
What happens when the Shekhinah comes fully revealed in the world to come? Ah. So that's a Mashiach course that we're, you know, we're not, we're not going there right now. Um, which again, whoever would still like to join, we're only going into our second week of six weeks. You can go to jlimontreal.com to get more information if you'd like to still sign up. Um, but yes, the Shekhinah ultimately is going to be fully revealed. And how could that be if we just said we're going to be obliterated by it? Okay, it's a good question. We're not going to answer that right now. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good question. But we're going to get we're going to get more of that in the course itself. But that's the ultimate. The ultimate is that not just the essence of God, you know, that is beyond revelation, but that which is the essence of God being revealed that we should have a relationship to, a connection to. Because that's what ultimately God wants, is to have, that we should have that connection to him. So right now we're explaining it, and this, like, it's going to continue this whole idea. And we're going to see how in the forthcoming classes, in every world, there is the divine revelation in that spiritual world. And how you can connect to the, the divine presence in that spiritual world. And then finally, in this world, how you can relate to it and connect to it. And then ultimately, um, that's what we have the capacity now. But that won't be fully revealed until the time to come, Messianic age. Absolutely. So here's another question, if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. Uh, can you explain the colloquial idea of transition in terms of uh, the feminine aspect of the divine? I'm not sure I understand the question. What do you mean the so transition? Transition begins one place and ends up in another place. Uh, in other words, I might be going through a transition in my life, either emotionally or I might be moving, or you know, whatever. Um, and um, so, the the sense of um, the the sense of impending difference in what's coming next um, is sort of bringing in this notion of um, of being in particular times um, that feel very transitional, like this one. How does the how how can we understand that in terms of the divine imminent, imminence as opposed imminence, to right. yeah yeah? Okay. I don't know if that's any clear. I I think so. I, I I think so. So that's part of the the that's what comes from Malchus. Remember, Malchus is. The Shrina, the divine presence. The divine presence is the power of speech of the king. Um, and that's the creative power of God that comes into creation that is now creating through the word of God the various things in creations. So that's Malchus as it comes into creation and is the source of vitality of everything within creation. In it, vested in it, is the divine presence. So what that means is in everything that is animated in my world at this moment, what I need to see is really God messaging me and his word that is creating. So if I am seeing a tree it's really God who's giving vitality to that tree in that moment. And it's really, in a sense, God talking to me through the tree and giving me a message. What that message is, we're, we won't go into that right now. Um, but just briefly, the, 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 the idea of a message is that there is a relationship that you're, that you, in the fact that you just see the tree, right? That you have a connection to the tree, that, that God is messaging through his power of creation in the tree that i should now grow from that or or gain something in my connection to god through that message so what we need to look for is what's the message of god in this particular moment this particular event or this particular thing that i'm i'm perceiving whatever it might be that that's what so, we're... so is it is it fair to say that the 
process aspect of transition, the sense of things being in movement. So we get a message, so to speak, and then we feel changed by that message and that sense of of, of changing the movement, the, the process, the non-static part. Is it static? The message is static. It comes, we got it, and now it changes us. Um, is, is, is that kind of what you're getting at? Uh, yeah. In other words, there, there's, a, there's, there's, you know, in a sense, everything in creation is God speaking it into being. That means he's communicating. And that what we need to see is that whatever situation we're in, whatever experience we're going through, whatever thing we're seeing even, is, you know, God animating, not in a static way, but in real time, something from nothing, and therefore giving right. me a particular uh, message f from him. And that is, you know, to be able to appreciate and to live with that is to really understand that God is, you know, is present. Is present. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me just take here from Andrew, who's been sitting tight. Uh, if the Torah was created in the spiritual world, was not the feminine uh, female energy already there when Torah was given to us? Yes, it was. And we're going to learn more about that, Andrew, in the forthcoming classes um, to appreciate what that means in the various dimensions of the world. But yes, absolutely correct what you're saying. Um, but, but we will get there. Uh, Andrea, is this true that there are three like goods from stars? And just one Elohim, what? Uh, I'm not clear what this means. I don't get that, Andrea, sorry. Okay, so Andrew, um, yes, and we're going to get more to that. Rav, what you th what is the female energy of Orshina? Is a created thing or divine expression? Just s simple will of Hashem, and it's simply come into existence. So this is Chabad teachings, and it's going into really the nitty-gritty of understanding the essence of God, God as creator, which was going to come more in the second part of Tanya, starting next Sunday, actually, a week today. We'll start that of understanding the power of creator within creation. But now we're not we're not speaking about the power of God within creation. We're speaking about the Shekhinah, which is the divine presence of God. That is that we have a relationship to God, not just as, cre as creator, but well beyond that, his presence. Now we're trying to understand what that means. So that is taking presence means taking the infinite of God being revealed in a present manner, which is, again, Malchus, as we're explaining over here, that is revealing that, um, that power of God. Metaphorically, like the sun. Another metaphor because there is a connection here between um, divine intelligence and the Shekhinah, the divine presence, and the relationship was like the seed and Mother Earth that brings forth and manifests the, what's in the seed. So the divine intelligence is the seed, the Earth, Mother Earth is manifesting that, that what's in the seed. So likewise, the Ain Saif of God is first reflected in divine intelligence, but that needs to be manifest through the Shekhinah. Just, you know, all these metaphors. <laughs> so what we care about over here is not God as creator right now. That's not where we're going with this. Because God as creator is God within creation. We have a relationship to him that is not merely him as creator, but is his manifestation of Shekhinah, the presence of God. And that's where we're going with this, but, you know, we're kind of in the middle of a thought. <laughs> so we're going to go further with it in the forthcoming classes. So I hope Rob, that's, uh, that brings more clarity. Jay, how can violence, abuse, and injustice be justified in God's name? I can't. 
God forbid, of course not. You know what the problem is? If we only look as God as creator and that we don't have a relationship to him by way of his presence, then what happens is we, um, we, 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 we're missing the relationship. And therefore, we just, whatever. So Wait. here's another question, if you don't mind. Just, just give me just one moment. Absolutely. I just, sure. uh, uh, John, I just want to make sure I've given everybody here some uh, equal time. Uh, because since they can't speak, they can only write. <laughs> um, so, Jay, I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not certain why from what we're speaking over here, there could be anything justified in God's name. What people do, I, actually, Jay, okay, let me, let me give this more of the context. Um, just because someone says in God's name and, and they doing something that is violent, doesn't mean obviously it's in God's name. We have freedom of choice. So we could choose between our animal soul and our godly soul. So if you choose your animal soul and you're going to say, huh, in God's name, I'm doing da da da, well, you know, you're just, you're choosing, you're, you're using God in order to do what you want. And unfortunately, many people do that, right? Many people do that. And that is not justified at all. You're just using your animal soul, in other words, what you want, and now you're using God to, to get what you want. It's got nothing to do with God. But if you choose to connect to God, have a relationship with God, um, to the presence of God, the shechina of, of God, right? How that will express itself, we're going there. We, we didn't get there. We're now we're just, it was very um, uh, ethereal and abstract in a sense. We're going to get there, okay? But we need some time, right? By the end of the week, I promise you, we'll have <laughs> a fuller story. It's going to emerge, and it's going to fu uh, fully get there. Okay, uh, briefly, John, because um, I have um, I must um, run in a moment, but go ahead. Sure. So let's um, bring Shochinat Mahom into the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the, so uh, once again, let's give context. Shechinad Marom is a prayer um, that we say on Shabbos. But go ahead. Yes. So, um, Ad obviously relates to forever. What about Mahom? And Shochin, of course, is Shechina, which wasn't specifically right. mentioned. But right. So, um, so uh, in other words, it's uh, um, the presence of God is forever. But what's Mahom? So Marom is Shechen Ad Marim Kadesh Shemai, right? Shechen Ad, that God dwells, right? Dwelling here meaning Shechina, presence of God, right? That's the key over here, because we want to have a relationship to God Himself. We have it through the presence of God of Shechina, um, and. Kadesh Shemai, Kadesh means holy, removed, is his name. So his name, Akadesh Baruchu, and here we have the male and female coming together. The, the relationship that we have with God is both male and the female aspects that they come together ultimately in a union. How do we have that relationship? Well, it's through the mitzvah that we do through the Torah studies we're doing right now. When we do that, that gives us a capacity that we can now have a connection, a relationship to the essence of the divine. I would like to discuss... What, what about the word Mahom itself? That, I was, so that was a specific question. Sure. Yeah. Um, so Marom means lofty, right? Um, it, it, it's lofty because, as again, this is not the way God is within creation this is the way god is his divine presence and that is a lofty um that's a a a lofty aspect of the divine as opposed to the imminence of god imminence is within creation then god 
fills the world, as he fills the world differently in a, uh, in a rock, to a plant, to an animal, to a human, to angels and souls. And, but this is not that aspect of the divine. This is the aspect of the divine that our relationship is towards and is to the essence of God, which is um, revealed through Shrina Marom and Shmo, his name, Kadesh, holy, the holy one, but to be the, uh, the uh, male part of the God, of God. And with that, so that I, partic- I with that, that, that particular prayer fragment mm-hmm. seems to be a kind of bridge between um, the, um, the, um, the mundane and, and the holy. That, that whole fragment itself seems to be some sort of a tying together. Um, does that sound right to you? It, 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 again, um, it's about connecting to God, not as creator, to God as our, my relationship to him. Right? Okay. That, that's, that, that's the key over here. But we, we're going to have to continue the, uh, the conversation um, because I have other responsibilities like a mother. <laughs> and I'd love to continue because I enjoy this immensely. Um, thank you. But yes, thank you, John, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining, and uh, our conversation to be continued tomorrow, 9:30 a.m. Sundays is at 10:30, but during the week, Monday through Friday, 9:30. And for those who would like to, like to join today on the Parsha, 6:30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, and that will be at, on Facebook Chabad ZK or on Zoom. 770 770 6085 if you'd like to join that uh, that would be tonight i'm rabbi ronnie fine coming to you for chabad zuch and kedeshim in montreal canada it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the time you have a wonderful day thank you all for joining